book of John chapter John chapter 7 and um, verse 37 or from verse all right 37 it says and in the last day of that great feast or in the last day that great day of the feast uh, Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink. And he said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried aloud, saying, If any man thirst, let him come on to me and drink. And that he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his own belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he says, this he spake of the spirit, that is, let him come unto me and drink of the spirit. And the resultant effect of that is out of their own bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Now, now, before I go into what I want to say, I just want to um, make sure we get something right in our thinking. If we go to Acts chapter 4, it tells us about, um, uh, from verse 15, it says, But when they were commanded, or when they had commanded them to go out, aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done. And then in verse 17, that it spread no further among the people, let's threaten them, that they speak henceforth, all right, to no man in his name. And they called them and commanded them to speak, not to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. And then the Bible tells us in verse 21, for so when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them. And the scripture says in verse 23, And being let go, so the men let them go. And now being let go, they quickly went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and elders had said. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art in heaven. And then they prayed. And in verse 29, they said, Behold their threatenings. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word. And then what happens is, by the stretching forth of thy hand to heal, signs and wonders may be done in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began, to, and they spoke the word with all boldness. So it tells us here that they went back to their company, having been threatened, and they were in a situation where they were thirsty. Now I just quoted the scripture to make us understand that even though in John chapter 7, there in verse 37, it refers to the fact that this he spoke of the Holy Ghost that was not yet given, all right, doesn't mean that what he was referring to was the one-time experience of getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. But he was talking about an experience 
of the continuous infilling of the Spirit that is described in Acts chapter 4 because these men were once baptized in the Holy Ghost in the day of, on the day of Pentecost, we know that. But then they had the experience of continuing being filled with the Spirit, right, when they were thirsty. In other words, when you are thirsty means you long to see the demonstration of God's power in a situation. And it says, when you are thirsty, that's what it means, which means you long to see my power come up unto me and drink of my spirit. The resultant effect is that out of your belly will flow, all right, what you have drank from me. So you drink, all right, from me, and it enters into your belly, and then from your own belly, it now goes out as rivers of living water, and what you're going to have is a demonstration of the Spirit that you were filled with when you came to drink. So you come to drink of him. And that's what the same thing Paul said in Philippians 1 and verse 19. If you put it up, he said, I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers, and you can say, and the infilling of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. In other words, the supply of the Spirit means the drinking in of the Holy Ghost for that particular situation where there is a demonstration of the Spirit in that particular situation. So if you are thirsty, then you are deliberately going to God, all right, to drink, to quench that particular thirst. In other words, what was raised up at that particular time, you need an entrance of the Spirit to meet that particular need. And when you are filled with the Spirit, you are satisfied on the inside before there is even a demonstration. In other words, if you are thirsty and you are tired and then you drink water, there is a refreshing feeling you get and you are energized. Now you can continue the journey, but it's because you got filled with water. Which means when you got filled with water, something happened on the inside. And that's what happens when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you can now speak with all boldness. Which means all the timidity and the fear disappeared. All right. And the, the effect of their threat was gone because they received a deliberate supply of the Spirit of Jesus for that particular thing, right? And so we say the theme for the rest of the year is finishing 2019 strong, which is in the strength of, the, of God, uh, and that has to be by the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And so there are specific things that, all right, you want a demonstration of the Spirit of God in, in your life. And we're saying in very specific terms, you go to God, and if you want healing in your toe, then you are asking for a supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, all right, for the healing. And I'm not sure what will happen. Healing, all right, of that particular toe, which is different from three years ago when you had an intense headache and you needed to get healed of it, all right, and you prayed to God and there was an, well, maybe you didn't know, but there was an infilling of the Spirit for the purpose of healing, all right, you of that particular thing. So anytime you're thirsty, it says you can come up to me and drink. And we said that there were three major feasts in the nation of Israel in one year. And the three of them, all right, and they have their spiritual parallel. Right? It tells us in Exodus 23 and verse 14, I believe we can start from verse 14, about, it says, Three times shall you keep a feast unto me in a year. I, I personally believe, all right, we have that power. And it says, Thou shalt keep 
the feast of the unleavened bread. Now, as someone says, well, this is Old Testament and all of that. Now, it was the feast of the unleavened bread, and I think it's 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17, I believe, where it talks about us keeping this feast here. So it tells us in 1 Corinthians, put it up here, that Christ, our Passover. So the first feast was what was called the feast, all right, of the Passover there. Okay? No, this all right. Okay, yeah. It's, it's chapter 5, sorry. All right, it says, Paul, you the old leaven, that it may be, all right, a new lump, as you are unleavened, for Christ, now keep, go back there, it says, verse 7, for Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Then verse 8, it says, therefore, let us keep the feast. So there is a New Testament instruction to keep that particular feast. Now, that feast there, right, was a feast of the Passover, and they celebrated it every year. And in that feast there, what happened was, the day the lamb was sacrificed and the blood was placed upon the doorpost, the angel of death, all right, passed over when he saw the blood. And it was at the same time, same date, right, that Jesus, in that calendar, Jesus was crucified as our Passover. And he says, let us also keep this feast with the unleavened bread, put it there. And he says, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. In other words, uh, when we keep this feast, it, it is when you exercise yourself uh, to make sure that your heart is void of any inf um, ill feeling, all right, or ill will towards another person, uh, that there is that complete forgiveness in your heart, in your spirit there, there is no bitterness, there is no anger towards any person. And, and so when you stand praying, you keep that feast. When you forgive uh, and you let go and you pray, all right, for all the people, and, and you use good, and the Bible says we have passed from death to life, that's that Passover because we love the brethren, because we have nothing inside our heart, all right, towards any person, all right, even if they've done us wrong, we have overcome that. And, and in Romans chapter 12, the last verse, it says, overcome evil with good. Okay, it talks about overcoming evil there with good. So that was the feast of Passover. Then 50 days after that, it talked about the feast of Pentecost, which was when they got baptized in the Holy Ghost, or, right, that was the spiritual power here, as the first fruits of what was to come, which was the first installment, that is, you got baptized. So this was going to be, I mean, if I want to buy a car and I pay a first installment for that car, right, it means that I'm going to bring more installment until it is finally paid, all right, up. And so it was the baptism, and that means that you are going to experience that thing continuously until there is the fulfillment or the redemption of the purchased possession, which means that everything that God has bought for you in Christ, all right, you have taken possession of it. That was the first installment, and then it continues. Right? In their own time there, they gave their first fruits unto God of their labor, which means that God, uh, all right, they walked on the earth, and then they gave the first fruits, and then God now stepped in, and their bands, all right, came, and that was what brought the third feast, which was the feast of ingathering, or what is called, all right, the great harvest. Now, it was that feast that Jesus was speaking about when he said, the celebration of this feast for you will mean, if any man thirst, let him come up to me and drink. Now, that's what happened in Acts chapter 4, right? And out of their belly, which means they drank of the Spirit, and then they released the Spirit when they spoke the word with all boldness. So rivers of living water came out. You can read Acts 4 to Acts 5. You'll see that rivers started flowing on the streets of Jerusalem, 
there was a major demonstration of the Spirit, all right, in, all right, Jerusalem there. So here is the pattern that God wants for us. Uh, we need to step into this third phase. We're talking about that, that when you get into any situation, you come up to God and drink. I mean, if pastor friend told me, listen to the message on Sunday, and he said, you know, I, and I'm going to say something, I know he's strong. He said, you know, I've just never seen that third feast the way you shared it. And I said, the real problem is that, all right, ministers, I ain't going to teach that third feast. Now, the reason why we ain't teaching the third feast is that we don't know how to pastor people who are experiencing the third feast. Because if out of the belly of everybody is flowing rivers of living water, then what, then again, is the essence of our ministry? Because if people have discovered how rivers can flow out of them, and rivers are flowing out of the belly of everybody, then how do we pastor people, all right, who are getting filled by the Holy Ghost and rivers are flowing out? And because we've not changed the architecture, right, of ministry, we're capacity to handle it. So what happens is the actual fact of the matter is that members of the congregation actually have been indoctrinated Right? So, um, maybe we didn't do it deliberate. We only didn't do it in ministry. I'm talking about the whole of ministry now, global now. All right? To so make themselves have a sense of being inferior. And it is easier to lead weak people than strong people. All right? Because when you can manage people that are weak, when people feel they are inadequate, they are easy, all right, to lead and to manage than to have people that are strong. So, we've never been able to conceive, all right, what ministry will really be if rivers are flowing out. Now, the truth about the matter is, right, I mean, it's the truth. If you say, all right, the value of anything is the price that was paid for it, that's the value of something. In other words, if I buy something with 10 million, that is the value. And if I buy 25 things with the same 10 million, then the value of those 25 things is the same. So if it's the blood that bought every single soul, the value of every single soul is the same. So the pastor is not more valuable than any member of the congregation in the eyes of God. The same value that he has placed on them. All right? Now, okay? You always say, well, we should want to. Yes. But the same value in terms of you bought you with the same price. Right? And so the thinking is nobody can even come to the point where they can even conceive. I mean, you see, you could see what Paul, Peter and John did. They went back to their company. It was the church that prayed together. I mean, they threatened them. They went back to the people. The people prayed together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then, all right, rivers, all right, began, okay, to flow out of their own belly. And then they said, listen, they started speaking the word of God with all boldness. Uh, that's what happened. And, and, and massive things began to happen. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 18. It talks about if any man is thirsty, I will open up rivers. All right, uh, start from verse 17. It says this, it talks about when the poor and needy seek water and there's none, and their tongue, this is what he was talking about, faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them, that's in prayer, and I will not forsake them. Verse 18, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys, and I'll make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry ground springs of water. So he expects that we come up, all right, and, right, we drink of him. And that's a celebration there of the last and great feast. What is important? That if you're going to get to this last and great feast here, then, uh, and that's the feast of in gathering, then you must keep the two feasts before that. Uh, the first one deals with making sure that inside your heart, right, there is no, and Satan knows that if I can get you here, then I can stop everything. If the feast is a feast of ingathering, that's why Jesus said, judge not and you won't be judged, condemn not, you won't be condemned, forgive, which is that Passover, and you shall be forgiven. Then he said, give and then he said, and it shall be given back unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So shall men give into your bosom. So it's an in gathering that comes in the third feast, which is men, uh, uh, people are responding to you, sons of strangers, kings, all right, things are gathering, everything is gathering unto you there. 
but you've got to forgive. To forgive means before. That's why it says if you place your gift on the altar and you haven't forgiven, right, it says there is really, all right, no value in that thing you've placed on the altar. So the first, first sacrifice before the almighty God, all right, that he takes from the Christian as an act of worship is to recognize his lordship. It tells us the blood of Abel spoke. It says that God is speaking, all right, from heaven. It says we shall hear the blood, the voice of the blood that speaketh better things than the vo blood, all right, the blood of Jesus that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. So Babel's blood cried for vengeance. Jesus' blood is speaking into our hearts for mercy. He is saying that, do good unto them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. He says he's speaking that. That's his voice there, telling us. That's why the Bible says they overcame him first by the blood. That's the starting point. And that blood speaks inside the heart and tells you that, right, you should respond, all right, to people, all right, in a certain way. Uh, and it speaks about that forgiveness on the inside. And then you, you, you do that by the grace of God, and you get into this third phase that gets into what he calls the end gathering. So this feast is about people being taught, and they understand that if we're thirsty, we come together and we drink, and then out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. Uh, uh, um, 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 Moses dreamt of that day in Numbers chapter 11 and verse 29. Right? Some people were prophesying. And, and, and Moses said, woe to God that all. They came to meet him and said, stop this fool from prophesying. And he said, envious thou for my sake, woe to God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. In other words, Moses said, if all the Lord's people were prophets and the Lord put his spirit upon them, the burden of ministry will be gone. Hi there. This video walks you through a step-by-step -step process on how to join the Covenant Nation weekly services across all channels using any device. Computer. To watch the Covenant Nation video live stream with a computer, please take the following steps. On your personal computer, laptop, desktop or Mac, open a web browser like Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome. Type www.insightsforliving.org forward slash livestream into the address bar and click the enter button. Once the page is launched, click the play button at the center of your screen to join the video live stream. To watch in full screen mode, click on the square button to expand the video. To listen to the Covenant Nation audio live stream using a computer, simply take the following steps. Type in www.insightsforliving.org forward slash audio dash live stream. Click the play icon to join the audio live stream. Mobile device. To watch the Covenant Nation video live stream on a mobile phone, tablet, phablet, take the following steps. Open a mobile web browser like Safari or Google Chrome on your device. Type www.insightsforliving.org forward slash livestream into the address bar and click the enter button. Click the play button at the center of your screen to join the video live stream. To watch full screen, click the square button to expand the video. To listen to the Covenant Nation audio live stream on a mobile phone, tablet, phablet, take the following steps. Type in www.insightsforliving.org forward slash audio dash live stream into the address bar. Click the play icon to join the audio live stream. Facebook to join the Covenant Nation video live stream via Facebook, type in www.facebook.com forward slash Covenant Christian Center into your address bar and hit the enter button. Click on the like button so you are notified immediately the live stream is up. YouTube Open up the YouTube app on your mobile device or log on to www.youtube.com into a web browser. Search for the Covenant Nation in the search bar. 
click on the subscribe button. Click on the bell button so you are notified immediately the live stream is up. Whether you prefer to watch the video or listen to the audio live stream, whether you prefer to watch on the website or Facebook or YouTube, whether you're using your PC, tablet or mobile devices, the Covenant Nation weekly service is just a few clicks away. Choose a convenient access point and stay connected. Powered by the Covenant Nation. Thank you for watching today's program. To listen to the full message or any other messages, please visit www.elibrary.insightsforliving.org and to find out more about the Covenant Nation, visit www.insightsforliving.org or download the C3 Live app on Android or iOS. God bless you.